What's up YouTube, Daniel Carter at Afro Herb Keeper here. Today, I've got a video that strays a little bit from my usual content. Today, we are going through the DIY process of preserving small lizards as wet specimens using formalin and isopropyl alcohol. To my left here is a cage containing one adult male Coleonyx brevis, or Texas banded gecko. Um, I've had this guy for quite a while now, just over a year, and he's perfectly healthy, he's doing great, um, he's a, a gorgeous little animal. But also on the shelf over here, I have two very small vials containing nearly identical specimens of this species. Uh, these are both, I, I believe both of them are also male, uh, these are both Coleonyx brevis Texas banded gecko specimens. I actually got all three of these animals at the same time from the same person. But within a few days of my purchasing them, both of these individuals passed away. When I received these animals, Watney, the one in the cage, was the only one that appeared really healthy. These two were somewhat dehydrated, they looked thin and frail, and they didn't make it past two or three days. Um, it was really disheartening at the time, but before we continue with the video, I'd like to say that this process is done entirely with respect for the animal. These geckos were not killed to make this video. On the contrary, I view preserving these animals as giving them sort of a purpose after death. Though they may have passed on, their bodies have not gone to waste. These animals could be used, perhaps in the future, for scientific research. They could go to a museum collection, anything of that sort. If you'd like to learn this means of preservation at home, I'll be walking you through it every step of the way. So, without any further ado, let's roll up our sleeves, put our hair back, and get started. So, to reiterate, today we're preserving two Texas banded geckos, Coleonyx brevis. Neither of these animals were harmed for this video, and both passed away from natural causes. Preserved animals of this sort are fascinating to examine, and often hold potential to be used as scientific specimens. Properly preserved specimens can remain intact for decades or longer. Many people choose to preserve their pets, especially exotic animals, so that they aren't forgotten, and to give them meaning after death so they don't go to waste. It's worth disclaiming that this was my first time working with any of these materials or preserving any sort of wet specimens. There are likely numerous other methods that work just as well as mine. However, over a year later, my geckos look exactly as they did when this was filmed, meaning the process works just fine. The entire preservation process can take anywhere from two weeks to two months, depending on the sizes of your specimens. But this video will be documenting the preservation of two very small animals, so it shouldn't take quite that long. I'll be preparing the geckos to soak in 10% formalin. Formalin is a formaldehyde solution often used as a fixative for biological specimens, mainly fish, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and mammals. Its primary function is to cross-link proteins, stop cellular respiration, and kill bacteria within the specimen. To create 10% formalin, you'll need 37% formaldehyde and distilled water. 37% formaldehyde is equivalent to 100% formalin. All you have to do is mix one part 37% formaldehyde with nine parts water. I have 40% formaldehyde, so I'll be using a little extra water. Formaldehyde is highly carcinogenic, so be certain to use proper protection while working. I'm linking a more complete guide in the description below, so please read through it if you're considering using these materials. I will be wearing latex gloves, safety goggles, and working under a fume hood. This ensures that the fumes released by the materials are sucked up via a ventilation system. Before we get to using our formalin, the specimens need to be cleaned. Both geckos were frozen within 12 hours of their passing. The sooner this can be done, the better. If rigor mortis sets in, your specimens will be stiff and difficult to position. Once frozen, it's important to allow any specimen to thaw out before processing. First, your animals need to be rinsed off to remove any material such as blood or dirt that could be obstructing the outer layer of skin. This is especially important when working with birds and mammals, as they often excrete oils, lipids, and waxy materials. Dish soap can be useful to counteract this in higher vertebrates, but reptiles, amphibians, and fish can usually be rinsed with just water. I'm using soap anyways, just because it can't really hurt. Now that the geckos have been cleaned, it's time to position them. One aspect of formalin is that it actually stiffens the bodies of specimens, similar to rigor mortis. 
So what we're doing now is placing the geckos in the position we want them to stay in for good. Animals larger than these will actually need to be injected with formalin. Generally, it should be injected at even intervals anywhere the body exceeds three-fourths of an inch in width, and in large muscle masses. However, these specimens are small and thin enough that the formalin will be able to reach everywhere without injection. You can use either a glass container or a pickling tray to fix your specimens, and paper towels can be used to keep them in place if need be. Generally, you want to use a container that holds 8 to 10 times as much fluid as the specimen takes up. Once you're happy with the look and placement of your animals, it's time to fill the containers with our 10% formalin solution. Once again, be sure to use protection while working with formalin. Keep it off your skin and out of your eyes and avoid inhaling it. If you don't have a fume hood available, work outdoors or use a fan to blow the fumes away from you. You don't want to end up with fixed eyes. Depending on the size of the specimen, full fixation can take anywhere from two days to a month. With animals this small, I'll only be waiting about three days. Something the size of an adult ball python would take approximately two weeks, and something the size of an adult snapping turtle would take around a month. While we wait, I'm going to create our second solution. This is the long-term preservative that will keep our specimens looking just as they did in life. The substance which will serve this purpose is a 75% ethyl alcohol, also known as ethanol. Though it's not nearly as harmful as formalin, it's still a poison. If it splashes on your skin, there's no need to worry, just don't drink it. Before we can place our specimens in their final preservative, we need to get their cells adjusted to the alcohol. Dropping them straight into a 75% ethanol solution could be damaging and would likely dry them out. To compensate for this, I'm creating a mixture with a lower percentage of alcohol, around 50% alcohol, 50% distilled water. Three days later, our geckos are stiff, rubbery, and ready for the next step. Carefully, I'm draining the formalin back into its labeled beaker. This stuff could still be reused at a later date. Once the jars have been thoroughly drained, we're going to rinse them and their lids with clean water to remove any leftover formalin. When this is done, we'll dry the lids off with a paper towel. Now it's time to submerge the specimens in our 50% ethanol solution. As we did with the formalin, we're going to pour this gently to avoid spills and keep the geckos in place. Once the lids are back on, we're going to leave them to sit a second time, this time for about a week. Larger specimens will likely need two, as the alcohol will take longer to replace the water left in their bodies. About a week and a half later, just to be safe, the geckos are finally ready to be put in their final preservative solution. The 50% mixture will be carefully drained from our specimen jars, but unlike the formalin, this can be disposed of just about anywhere. Since it's composed of the same material as our final solution, we don't need to dry the jars either. Once we've carefully filled the jars with 75% ethyl alcohol, the process is finally complete and we can sit back to admire the beautiful creatures we've preserved. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. As previously stated, there's an even more complete guide linked in the description. If you used this video as a means of preserving your own specimens, I'd love to see them. I can be reached through YouTube, Instagram, or by email at afroherpkeeper at gmail.com. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like or comment, and if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you can join me for even more reptile-related content in the future. Thanks for watching.